I got a story for you today. This is something else. This is a story about art forgery. It involves a very famous painting, a famous painter, a uh, motion picture. It involves death. It involves everything. Everything all rolled up into one really cool story. You're going to love this one. Uh, this is a story about a, a forged painting and how it came to fool everyone. I found something behind a wall. We removed the bottom shelf. We could just wow. begin to pull the wall open like this. And there we are. So the painting at the heart of this is called Breaking Home Ties. And here, this, this is what it looks like. This is a Norman Rockwell painting. It was done as a cover for the Saturday Evening Post, as were a lot of Rockwell's paintings. Uh, this one was from 1957, and it depicts a country man, like a, an old farmer, and he's taking his son, who's waiting for, I guess, the train or the bus or whatever, to take him to college. So it's like first generation going from, you know, the farmer to college. And you see, right with this, with this, uh, you know, father and son, you see this dynamic of of, a, of an amazing change happening. And it's it's a beautiful picture that tells quite a story. Such a story that they made it into a TV movie. Coming. Sure is. Ten fourteen. Like I told you, Lonnie. Right on the button. How about that, boy, huh? Big old train. Just like the ones you used to chase, huh? Now, if you know anything about me, you know I don't know a damn thing about art. But this painting is supposed to be one of Norman Rockwell's masterworks. Norman Rockwell is known for having an art style that most people can appreciate. It's a very realistic style. It's a very folksy, homey kind of uh, painting. And this particular one uh, was voted the second most best thing he ever did. So it's supposed to be really good. That's the whole point. Mr. Norman Rockwell. I've painted for a long, long time and I've enjoyed it too. And I paint the different seasons. I paint winter and I paint spring and summer. But there's my favorite. I just love to paint summer. But no matter where you are, an important part of the American scene is a good cold glass of beer. And may we remind you to make a glass of beer or ale part of your summer scene. So in 2003, the painting is put on display at the Norman Rockwell Museum and scholars looked at it and they thought there were some things that were slightly off but they believe this was the original Norman Rockwell painting. I mean, this is the Norman Rockwell Museum. If anybody should know if this is the original, they should. So they put this painting on display. People come to see it. People enjoy looking at it. And there's still, there's some, some little things that are off. Now let's go back and learn about the person that owned the painting before it went to the museum. The man on this cover, painted by Rockwell, is the late Don Tracti, a well-known cartoonist and painter. He modeled for Rockwell and got to know him, says Tracti's son, also named Don. He worshipped Norman Rockwell and he just loved this painting. 1962, less than a decade after this painting had been on the cover of the Post uh, in Norman Rockwell's lifetime, this painting is purchased by a man named Don Tract. Now, Don Tract was actually a friend of Rockwell's. Uh, he was friends with other artists. He was an artist. He worked on the cartoon Henry. Henry? Cartoon about a bald boy? Uh, not Charlie Brown, though. Very popular cartoon. He was a very talented man, and he purchased this painting for $900, which was a lot of money but a very reasonable price for this painting then, and, and my God, was it a good deal in retrospect.
So let's talk about Henry. Henry uh, was a comic strip introduced in the 1930s. It's a, it's a boy who's bald, he's mute, he doesn't speak. At some points they even draw him without his mouth in a lot of it. Uh, this strip went on for a long time. I mean, it went on into the 90s. It was kind of, I remember this. This was kind of one though that I feel like a lot of the kids kind of, you read it because it was in the comic section and you wanted to read everything, but it wasn't really anybody's favorite, I think, post-1932. But uh, this Don Trecht, he was an illustrator for it. I think he did the Color Sunday uh, version of it, but he was an illustrator for it for many years, and that's a great art gig, you know? In the early decades of the last century, newspaper comics were mainly devoted to lighthearted or farcical characters and storylines which is how they came to be called the Funnies. While working on this, Tract lives in Vermont, and in Vermont, he strikes up a relationship with not just Norman Rockwell, but also Grandma Moses, who's one of the only painters I know because she went by the name Grandma Moses. Want to go Vermonting? You can't do much better than Arlington, a throwback town surrounded by mountains. Your quintessential movie small town. Arlington is very much the way Vermont was 50 years ago. Don passes away at a ripe old age and his family is going through the house and they notice a bookshelf that can slide, like like in the Batman series, can slide and they can find a, a hidden room behind it. Now, normally finding a hidden room in a dead person's house, it can be real dicey, but what they find on the other side of the wall is the Norman Rockwell painting, the one that somehow is also in the museum. Come over here, I want you to put your hands like this and we're gonna pull it toward me. There you go. Oh, there you go. Behind this secret sliding wall, Don and his brother discover what they didn't even know they were looking for. The original Rockwell painting, Breaking Home Ties. So now we've got two copies of this painting. And they've got a couple other masterpieces by other artists that they find in this space behind the bookcase. Now, the theory is that at one point when Don was going through a divorce, he was worried that his, his soon-to-be ex-wife would get the painting, as well as these other paintings that he owned as an art collector and as an artist. Uh, he didn't want to get rid of them. So what he did was he sat down and made copies of them. He sat there and tried to copy the paint strokes, tried to copy the painting style, and did it so well that the Norman Rockwell Museum couldn't really tell the difference. With this copy being found, everybody's scratching their head. They can't figure out what the heck's going on. They then unravel the story, and the artwork is then put on display side by side with the forgery. The Norman Rockwell Museum saying, hey, look, look what we got here. This is amazing. This is such a forgery. It's fooled the art world. It's fooled the museum. A couple years later, Sotheby's auctions off the original painting, the one that was found in the wall, and it sells for $15 million. This is a record for a Norman Rockwell painting. And this guy faked it. The new owner is anonymous. People don't know who he is. Doesn't really matter. I'm just hoping this guy's out there making another forgery. I'm hoping he's he's doing another copy. I'm hoping there's like 30 of these one day in Norman Rockwell museums around the country. Well, it's remarkable to think that this guy, he's a cartoonist. He's a, he's a guy who knows a lot about art and he's good enough to fool the Rockwell Museum. I just love this story. I think this is the story more than the movie about the painting. The movie about finding the painting, that's the one I want to see. I mean, it's just such a cool, like what was that art movie they did with Pierce Brosnan? Thomas Crown Affair? Yeah, I mean, this, this is quite a story. I hope you enjoyed hearing it. Right now, a couple boxes gonna pop up. There's one here and there's one over here. You can choose either one. I'm in both, so. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this story. Boy, uh, the things that people will do.